Uh, Lewis, just following on from the empath uh, question, there is a, a current movement in the spiritual community online, um, a statement of uh, spiritual, it's spiritual bypassing to be expressing uh, joy and, and, and keeping a love vibration during these troubled times, that it is more connected, more spiritual to be uh, sitting with the suffering of the world. Can you give us your thoughts on that? Sure. Well, I'm surprised that that's... <laughs> well, first of all, you've heard this line before, you know, um, <laughs> there's no such thing as spiritual. It's either all spiritual or not at all. Um, at the end of the day, our first dream is the spirit world, spirit being, our separate selves are fractured, our spirit beings, which have then projected onto this holographic universe planet, this illusion. And I prefer to say holog holographic universe because illusion sounds like it's not real at all. The experience is very real to us. So we project it into this world for a very specific reason, to make known the forgotten, to remember the self, to, to realize the I am, to realize the Holy Son of God as our self collectively. And so one of the great teachings of Jesus was, I seek mercy, not sacrifice. And how would being sad or withdrawn or closed up or solemn help if what we're meant to bring into this world is the self, which is in a permanent state of peace. Peace is the condition for joy. And joy is the condition of unconditional love. And once we're in that state of harmonized peace, joy, and unconditional love, what is our expression but in this world, but what appears to be happiness? And how can you help someone who's sad by being sad with them? That's again, if you go back to the previous question, if you're sad and I become sad with you, then that's just false empathy. Now, I've bought into your idea of suffering and separation, and I'm now empathizing with your suffering and separation, and I've made it my own. And how do you help a drowning man? Certainly not by diving into the water with him, if you're on a perfectly good boat, I mean, but rather throw, you know, um, a rope into the water and then pull them out, stay above the battlefield, stay out of the emotional ego war. Ego wants to pull you into emotion. Ego wants to pull you into suffering. And so the greatest service that we can give ourselves, our separate selves, what appears as separate body minds in this world, is to stay above the battleground, stay centered, stay true to the self, stay centered in the self, not self-centered or selfish from an ego point of view, which is at the expense of everybody else, but for the benefit of, of all our separate selves, as you stay centered in the self, not seeing the delusion of a suffering world, but realizing the real world, which is the awakened mind, and stay centered in that joyous, loving, unconditional, unconditionally loving, peaceful self, and offer that. So when you step into a room and, and you feel the density of sadness and suffering and People are sad because they believe death is real and, and you know, the, the, the death of bodies is real and they, they're missing people that they've lost um, through this pandemic and they've lost loved ones and family members and parents and, um, and spouses and friends. Of course, there's, there's a sadness because in the dream state, most people are unaware of, of, our loved ones in the spirit world. So, so there's a sadness. Now, if you join with the sadness, how do you lift them? Move in that space and bring the light of awareness into the darkest areas of this world. This is why I use the term lightly, the, 
the awakened, the light workers, are here to bring the light of awareness into the dark and fallen minds. And to those that are fallen means they've become trapped with the ego body mind identity of loss and sickness and disease and suffering. You're meant to be here and be the light of the world right now. So bring your joy into the world. I mean, if, if you're sad and you listen to sad music, it just makes you sad. And now if you do that as a concerted practice and you, and you burn that sadness out, you just go fully into the sadness, allow yourself to fully surrender into the sadness so that there's a death of the identity, the self will be revealed. And the minute the self is revealed, the joyous essential nature of the self comes out. And as soon as that, that self is made known as the joy that you are, share that joy, share that happiness, share that unconditional love with all, and you lift it. I mean, what, I mean, laughter is contagious. If someone laughs and is truly laughing from a joyous space, it lights up the room. How are you possibly helping others by joining in the suffering? Uh, that is, again, ego. And ego is very, very clever at disguising itself in spiritual terms and spirit, spiritual practices and immediately takes you into join the suffering. Please don't. Step above the battlefield. Remember the Lord God of your being, which has made itself known to you as the self, is joy itself, is love itself, is peace itself. Be that. Come into this world as the true self, as the joyous self, and lift this world out of the delusion of suffering, pain, and loss. How can you not be? Once you have, through the process of self-inquiry, disrobed and, un and, and, and unlayered all of those false identities and the self you are is revealed, that joyous, peaceful, silent, benevolent self, which is attached to nothing in this world, yet realizes it's connected to all because it is the dreamer that has dreamt up this entire world and therefore loves the creation in order to bring the creation back to itself and awaken, realizing it's never left its source, it's never left its father's home. The prodigal son has returned. There is now a joyous celebration. Be that joy which brings joy to the world.